You're watching the Intel Network and Edge vSummit series with our focus today on building the intelligent enterprise edge. How do service providers view the edge opportunity and what solutions are they offering to their enterprise customers? And how can Intel's networking security and IoT technologies be used to help build an intelligent enterprise edge? Well, joining me now to discuss service provider strategies for the edge are David Chakochis, VP Enterprise Technology and Field CTO at CenturyLink, David Lopez Meco, who is Manager Connectivity Innovation, Project Lead Enterprise Networking and Edge Computing at Telefonica, and Goka Ozturk, who is Segment Manager for Enterprise Networking Network Platforms Group at Intel. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be with you. Hello. Thanks. Thank you, Guy. David, let's start by establishing our positions. Why is CenturyLink so interested in the enterprise edge? Well, CenturyLink is one of the largest global communications service providers in the world. And we don't just view uh, the enterprise edge through the lens of networking and connectivity. We really view networking and connectivity and all the services we build around it in terms of adaptive networking, connected cybersecurity, and IT agility we look at all of those services through the lens of really powering the fourth industrial revolution. There's a lot of exciting use cases that are now emerging for us that require digital business models in order to succeed. And so global networking from the cloud all the way out to the edge is vital to a lot of these use cases. And we fundamentally think about uh, our customers and their digital business initiatives as a fundamentally executing a cycle in rapid iteration around acquiring data, analyzing that data for actionable insight, and then acting upon that data. And we really view the global enterprise edge or the distributed intelligent edge as sort of a massive power fan behind that cycle. You can acquire data from more sources. You can analyze patterns in closer to real time from within the network and then act upon that business logic a whole lot closer to the digital interaction. So we're interested in the enterprise edge and thinking about our strategy along the lines of taking all of our services and really focusing them on the emerging use cases of the fourth industrial revolution, especially in asset intensive or interaction intensive industries, because really what those are doing is opening up a lot of use cases that didn't exist before because of the combination of low latency and high bandwidth requirements and a number of other forces that are driving that fourth industrial revolution. And David, there seems to be th about you know three or four key requirements here. You've got high bandwidth, you've got low latency, you've got data, digital interactions. How do all of these specifically relate and impact on the enterprise edge? And also, you know, how do they relate to the network and cloud? Well, sure. I mean, there's there's really no such thing as uh, an or it's very rare to see an edge only solution in modern digital business. Everything uh, basically extends from the global cloud core out to the distributed cloud edge. And that's really where having a, a global networking player and a solution provider that can build uh, solutions that stem from the global cloud core all the way out to the distributed cloud edge is so vital. Um, really, the way we look at all those, uh, the, the, the global footprint of our network is in concentric bands of latency from the cloud all the way to the distributed edge. And that there's a number of different form factors and computing models that can help our customers build and implement these digital initiatives. Whether it, in, when you look at the global cloud core, you're certainly looking at uh, massive economies of scale in depending on how you use them among the lowest cost models in the industry. Um, but your latency to those environments can be very variable. Uh, you, you, can, you can certainly drive dedicated connectivity into the public cloud, but you don't always know where you're going to be needing, especially in a highly mobile use case, where you're going to be needing to apply your business logic against a certain digital interaction. Um, and so having better control uh, over those digital interactions and your business logic shaping those digital interactions between things and people and business models and all the different ways that you can recombine those means that a lot of times edge computing in premise-based computing is the right model, but then you're really functioning in, in as about as high a cost model as you possibly can when you're trying to carve out some of your scarcest real estate to be able to take on computing functions and business logic out in your customer premise layer. And that's where having uh, the balance of computing models that can exist from within the network 
uh, the first hop within the network being able to provide up things like metro edge computing, which will then allow over a range of local access methods, gives customers another uh, option for designing these end solutions. You certainly want to be pushing edge computing to the edge to only to the extent that you need for the particular use case. And really, that's why having a global solution provider that can give you solid networking between all these concentric bands of latency, while also giving you the ability to, in a very flexible and open way, give you a range of computing options from the global cloud core to uh, edge computing inside the network all the way out to the premise uh, is so valuable and a big part of our strategy. Thank you, David. And I want to come back later to talk about how we, we move workloads closer to the edge and also touch upon your universal CPE solution. Uh, but for now, let's introduce our second service provider guest, David Lopez from Telefonica. David, what is Telefonica's approach to the enterprise edge? Well, uh, my first comment would be that um, the vision that I'm going to share uh, right now is not uh, the Telefonica's vision, but the innovation vision. Okay, we are in a, within an innovation unit, so our KPIs are slightly different from uh, some commercial units, okay, the, inside Telefonica. So um, we usually approach uh, not just the enterprise edge, but uh, everything we do um, with two different goals. One is to uh, build a, a service or a product because uh, we are in a growth unit, but uh, the other one is to change the way an industry works uh, in favor of Telefonica if we can. So um, in the project that I'm leading, uh, which is focused uh, on the enterprise edge, but uh, in a very particular enterprise edge because we are targeting SMEs uh, and we uh, know that uh, those SMEs are really price sensitive. They need simplicity uh, on the user experience. Uh, they need to self-manage stuff and sometimes they don't have the IT resources that a multinational company uh, has. We are approaching the enterprise edge in a very uh, particular way, okay? Um, First, let me step back uh, a little bit. Um, all the uh, projects that we, in all the projects that we uh, do here in, in this department, we try to control the end to end of the value chain um, because we think this is the way uh, we can differentiate our products and, and services and assure that we have this long term sustainability for the telco business. Um, we think that we can play a role uh, on the technology side. That's why we try to develop technology. And in this segment that I just talked, uh, it's especially important to uh, control this end-to-end -end because the, we think that this is the only way we can uh, deliver this uh, really low price and simple products, okay? So in particular, uh, going through the, when to the uh, enterprise edge approach um, first, um, we see, uh, like in three words, uh, we see this enterprise edge as an open, uh, flexible, uh, flexible and intelligent edge. Um, open uh, because we need to control the technology. So uh, we use uh, open source uh, software, we use open uh, hardware like the universal CPE, uh, and we try to uh, demand uh, our partners and, 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 uh, and providers that they open the interfaces, okay? With that, we think we can lower uh, the TCO and provide uh, for, to the SMEs this uh, really uh, low price. Second is uh, flexibility or, or the flexible edge because uh, we are trying to build uh, really industrial um, experiences so that uh, we can deploy in one click a services a service for an SME or for thousands of SMEs. Um, we need to really be, uh, I mean, uh, we really deploy these uh, elements everywhere or in, uh, because uh, as the uh, David from Central Linux said, the enterprise edge is uh, now everywhere, it can be in a central cloud, in a, a telco edge or in the on-prem. So we need to build the orchestration mechanism so that we can deploy these components uh, on any edge. And finally, we need to uh, consider that the, today uh, the enterprise edge is not just networking, but also IT. So we have to be able to deploy both IT and networking applications uh, in, on every edge. And intelligent, and finally, because uh, once you uh, face a situation where everything is uh, distributed, you have uh, thousands of uh, different uh, network edges, uh, your network has to be uh, really intelligent so that uh, they can um, improve their performance, the, you can analyze all the data, etc., and you can uh, create the automation mechanism so that it's uh, scalable, can be operated and, uh, and can evolve at the pace of the business and the, and the needs that uh, we have, and especially those uh, SMEs uh, uh, need. Thank you, David. And you know, can we 
continue and, and could you explain a little bit more about how Telefonica is driving innovation here and, and how it relates to the network and the cloud? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, um, before I mentioned these uh, open players uh, that we want to change uh, things, we want to innovate, but uh, in order to succeed here, um, you have to provide incentives to the to the ecosystem and to telephonic itself to to do this that way. So um, first, uh, we need to gather volume uh, for these open uh, players, open ecosystem, etc. And we are trying to democratize the this kind of products, the enterprise edge, and all the applications that are on top uh, of this enterprise edge. So. We are democratizing, democratizing that uh, by um, trying to simplify all the user experience, digitalizing the, all the actions that uh, a customer can um, perform in our um, portals, etc. Then we are providing self-management uh, tools, especially for the SMEs that uh, cannot pay for our IT staff to support all these uh, all these operations, etc. And uh, lowering the TCO by precisely uh, using these open source and open players, uh, so we can compose uh, um, a product that is really cheap. So with this democratization, we uh, envision that uh, this uh, technology and the enterprise sites can be accessed. Uh, by everyone, every SME, so we gather volume and then also lower the TCO. Uh, second, uh, all the uh, innovation that we are trying to do here uh, needs uh, an ecosystem that uh, is sustainable. Okay, so we are trying to support our partners uh, by uh, doing things like today, sharing our vision in, in forums uh, with Intel and other forums so that um, everyone knows our vision and can also join uh, our way of, of seeing the world. Um, also, we are making strategic investments in these new partners, like for example, FlexiOne, the partner we are using for uh, the SD1 particular in this in this uh, project um, through our uh, startup accelerator branch or our VC uh, branches. And uh, finally, we are supporting our partners with time, okay, with time, because if we, if we want to create an ecosystem, everyone that needs to create an ecosystem has to know uh, that you have to uh, give them time to learn, have to, uh, time to mature their products, and then you can get them into the business, okay? But you are not going to create uh, or change things uh, without giving them time. So we are supporting also with our learnings, time, access to customers. This is the, the way we are doing it here. And finally, on the technology side, uh, the democratization uh, ecosystem, and finally, the uh, technology side, um, to achieve this uh, flexibility, um, this uh, intelligence, uh, to get uh, those open players into the into the ecosystem, we need to build cloud native uh, architectures um, to achieve this convergence. So we are building, uh, in particular, this product, but we are trying to do the same in all the pro and all the projects that we have in innovation. We are building everything in containers. We are trying to work uh, with DevOps methodologies and CI/CD tools. We uh, do uh, orchestration with Jenkins, uh, we use Terraform to, inf to uh, define infrastructure as code, uh, and that stuff. And finally, we are trying to build everything in a multi-cloud um, ready uh, architecture so that we can, uh, as uh, Century colleague uh, said, deploy the same applications everywhere. Okay, so we uh, somehow um, make the infrastructure homogeneous. Thank you, David. Uh, let's turn back to CenturyLink. Um, David, I'd like to talk about the universal CPE and I'd like particularly to talk about how you can use and leverage your UCPE at the premise edge, especially given the variety of use cases that we see in different enterprise verticals. Sure. So there's a, there's a lot of our strategy that uh, is organized uh, really in three key layers uh, and, and the ways that we span the global cloud core out to the distributed cloud edge, there's sort of three layers um, that span that. The first is an adaptive networking, dynamic uh, dynamic adaptive networking layer um, that is a software defined abstraction over the thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of physical buildings we have on net, the, the thousands of multi-tenant data centers we have on net, the dozens of public cloud on ramps we have on net um, that are all completely controllable and connectable into layer three routable domains. The middle layer of the strategy is really where computing workloads uh, come into play. And that's where we tend to have a, a bit of much more of an open and diverse posture, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of different workload models and computing models that are better fits for one workload that might uh, not be the best fit for another. 
uh, running it in a centralized com- cloud model, running it on a, a public cloud hyperscale control plane, running it on a distributed piece uh, of compute like a universal CPE box, all of those different compute models we need to be flexible about because there's going to be you know, different needs for different workloads. And then the top layer of our platform strategy is really one whereby we model workloads and treat all uh, workloads, whether as David uh, uh, from Telefonica was mentioning, uh, a network workload and an IT workload are really starting to become fundamentally the same thing. Whether you're deploying a virtual machine or a VNF, a lot of the nouns and verbs are the same, whereby you are modeling a workload, an application uh, in, in a known good state. You're deploying it and then life cycle managing that and making sure that your IT service management function and your global operations function have that orchestrated software uh, loaded into their configuration management systems for operational awareness. So the three layers of our strategy really look at a universal CPE in that middle layer. It's one of the computing options. And to us, a successful universal CPE device is really one that shows up and connects into our dynamic connections platform, right? It needs to be, work with the substrate layer of uh, software defined networking, but then it also needs to be able to present itself up to our orchestration layer as a, sort of, for lack of a better term, a very small cloud. Uh, and what you're starting to see more and more is the deployment of workloads onto any cloud platform, including things like universal CPE footprints and the ways that they express themselves to the world, either you know down to the network as something like a NetConf compliant uh, set of APIs or up to uh, the workload orchestration with things like OpenStack and, and a variety of other uh, open compute orchestration platforms and software defined data center platforms, even if the software defined data center is a very small pool of resource like a universal CPE device, uh, potentially powered by Intel, uh, that those uh, can all stitch into that global orchestration framework uh, that you can go and deploy workloads wherever you need to deploy them, but then stitch them all together into a common networking fabric so that those global solutions where you have a, a large pool of data in the public cloud stemming out to a smaller workload that's running out closer to either the premise edge or inside the core of the network, uh, you have all of those wired together and that you're deploying the whole thing in its entirety because a lot of the fourth industrial revolution use cases are really all around taking that data and continually adding value to it and then deploying business logic closer to the digital interaction so that you can continue that cycle even faster. So that's what universal CPE means to our strategy. It's just one another one of the potential computing venues that we can deploy workloads to. Thank you, David. Um- We've already heard about the importance of the ecosystem. We already know about the importance of collaboration. David, can you explain how CenturyLink is partnering with Intel on the enterprise edge? Well, we've been working with Intel for years, uh, is stemming back uh, five, six years to uh, some of our earliest work, taking a look at modern network uh, re-architecture and really disaggregation of a lot of the networking equipment that had existed inside of our environment. We've been building Intel powered uh, clusters inside the core of the CenturyLink network to do virtualized network functions um, and orchestrating those to both legacy and new networking models uh, for years. And that's driven a lot of efficiency inside of our global footprint. And it's one of the things that puts us now in a good situation to go start expanding those computing clusters to be able to do more uh, general business applications and uh, IT uh, infrastructure deployments within the core of the CenturyLink global network. We're also working with Intel um, on uh, our universal CPE form factors. And so a a lot of the universal CPE devices that we deploy out in the field are also powered by Intel. And what's vital and important uh, with all these things are are open standards, interoperability uh, with abstraction layers, right? That's the whole game basically is abstraction layers and interoperability and Intel's position as a company that Uh, is highly interoperable uh, and and very committed to open standards and very easy to work with at the hardware and the OEM layer um, really mirrors a lot of what you see the global networking providers doing, which is really trying to become sort of the intel for the fourth industrial revolution in many ways, whereby CenturyLink and global communication providers want to be able to leverage a lot of that high interoperability and open standards, but then add in uh, the dynamic of a global network footprint that can really turn uh, the broad built environment into sort of the motherboard for these workloads uh, that are going to be existing from the global cloud core all the way out to the edge. Now, Intel's also obviously working with Telefonica. David, can you um, tell us more about how Telefonica is partnering with Intel for the enterprise edge? 
Yeah, um, in our case, well, we've been working with Intel not in only in this uh, SME project, but uh, historically we've been working with them on the open on open RAM projects and on the edge computing project for the central offices. So the story is quite long, but uh, in particular myself and, and the project that I'm uh, running, uh, we are working with Intel to support the ecosystem. Okay, we are very focused on the ecosystem because, as we said, uh, we need the ecosystem to be sustainable. Uh, so with Intel, we are uh, trying to make players like Flexi One, for example, or SD One provider for this innovation project uh, to work properly on the Intel chipsets because they are, I mean, they are the uh, the common point between the hardware and the and the applications layers. So uh, we need Intel to help uh, the Flexi Ones of the world uh, to work perfectly on the universal CPE. Uh, and that's the way we are using the Intel uh, support. Uh, we need them uh, to help everyone in the ecosystem to be more open, to work properly on this hardware, etc. Um, also, uh, we've been using Intel as a, as a voice uh, to share our vision, like in this uh, particular interview, in, uh, we are writing papers uh, about the work we are doing with, uh, with Intel Flexi One testing the devices. And um, obviously, uh, they are um, also uh, facilitating um, all the relationship with the ODMs, etc. Uh, so they work closely with Flexi One and with Telefonica. So um, at the end, uh, we are using and Intel for uh, supporting the ecosystem. That's the main message, and they are doing it uh, pretty well in this case. Thank you. Well, let's bring in our third guest from Intel, who's been waiting patiently all this time. Goka, um, can I come to you and ask you about the specific technologies that Intel offers and is working on to meet these, these key considerations we're hearing about for the intelligent enterprise edge? Yeah, sure. Actually, David Sakokis from Centrelink and uh, David Lopez touched on very important uh, key points, uh, and they made it inclusive from edge to cloud. Uh, and Brian Lepin, uh, earlier today from BT, uh, also got into this uh, Enterprise Edge and UCP specifics. So it all starts with the platform, actually. So uh, at the down layers, uh, which we call it as universal customer premises equipment or the Edge hardware. So you need to have uh, the flexibility to be able to serve different use cases and different workloads. Uh, as both of our speakers uh, were mentioning, so there might be uh, some cases where you need just a thin branch environment, right? Uh, just the optimal connectivity from edge to cloud and edge to data centers. So that's the use case. You might have uh, an industrial IoT, a fab floor environment, which you have uh, thicker edge compute capabilities as requirements, and you have IoT uh, devices downstream, which you need to integrate and which you need to have the interface to connect to uh, data center and cloud. So. Uh, you need to have a platform to be able to serve to all those needs. And actually, we uh, segment this like uh, thin, medium, and tech. So uh, to have the consistency among those platforms, uh, we provide multiple options, starting with Intel Atom processors uh, from two, uh, 2 to 16 cores and up to Xeon D uh, processors from 4 to 18 cores. And these uh, processors, we call them as actually system on a chip uh, SOCs because they have specific networking and security capabilities integrated in, into the platform. So it becomes a more efficient, uh, cost-effective and power-optimized platform. And uh, when it comes to specific technologies that we are uh, integrating into those SOCs, we have uh, Intel Q Quickest technology, especially to accelerate SD-WAN uh, and security workloads from edge to clouds and IPsec acceleration, for example, which is fundamental to uh, SD-WAN. And just on top of that layer, of course, we have the NFVI OS layer. So in terms of all of this NFV journey that uh, David Sakokis uh, touched on as well. So from that point of view, this is no different actually, right? So you have an NFVI environment with the UCP uh, to be able to run different uh, VNFs and different workloads. So NFVI OS is the fundamental uh, layer for that. And uh, it is also used to provision uh, the UCP itself and uh, to provision the VNFs running on top and also to service chain them. So for that layer, there are multiple uh, vendors uh, in the ecosystem and we are working uh, with almost all of them. And uh, for that layer in specific, because that layer is very important when it comes to 
uh, optimum uh, packet processing. Uh, we are contributing and we are leading the efforts there with DPDK, Data Plane Development Kits, uh, which we had open sourced uh, back a while ago. And when it comes to cloud native uh, capabilities of the Data Plane Kits, uh, we are also working on uh, a new data plane called AFXDP. And uh, of course, that NFVI layer uh, from a convergence point of view, right? Because that NFVI layer can be on premise at the UCP, it can also be uh, at the network edge, right? So uh, you need to have a common platform between those two, right? At the NFVI layer as well. So we have Intel Openness. Uh, software toolkits, which is an open source uh, toolkit, actually that enables that highly optimized and per performant edge platforms. And it provides microservices, which is horizontal to any edge application, like enhanced platform awareness and data plane services, which you can both use at the net enterprise edge and the network edge. And it also provides some microservices which are specific to the network edge, right? Uh, especially from Mac multi-access edge compute, uh, computing uh, perspective, uh, like traffic steering and uh, you know multiple protocols, ter termination of multiple multiple protocols, especially for that Mac. So that's uh, we see as an important uh, layer as well. And of course, on top of the NFVI layer, we have SD-WAN and security. So uh, I think SD-WAN uh, is probably one of the uh, most famous uh, use cases in enterprise uh, and cloud networking nowadays. And we see that market growing in uh, double digits. So it's it has become a Steven plus security on that edge has uh, become the common denominator, right? For any uh, enterprise and any vertical, regardless of uh, where they are operating. Because Steven uh, becomes the key uh, technology to connect in an optimal way uh, that edge to the clouds and uh, to the data center. So interestingly, we are seeing SD-WAN, especially in this post-COVID world, uh, we are seeing SD-WAN uh, coming up with new use cases uh, like work from home, right? Uh, where ac actually home becomes a kind of an enterprise edge for enterprises, right? Because you, you have now, instead of hundreds of uh, edge uh, sites, you have thousands of edge sites because people are working at home. So SD-WAN uh, is being used uh, to optimally connect home workers uh, to the clouds, cloud apps of the enterprise and uh, to the cloud data center as well. And security, of course, is an integral piece. And depending on the use case at that enterprise edge and the requirements, you can have on-prem security, you can have off-prem security with security as a service uh, being offered from the cloud. But for uh, when you need to have on-prem security, like uh, you might want to have as an enterprise, the same next generation firewall that you run in your data center or in the cloud to run in the edge as well. So uh, from that point of view, security becomes uh, a key workload. And uh, there again, uh, with uh, embedded technologies like Quickus technology, uh, we are accelerating that uh, SD-WAN and security workload. On top of that, there is the cloud native orchestration, right? And in that, there are two keywords uh, hidden in just one uh, term. So cloud native, uh, as David Lopez touched on that as well. So uh, we are seeing an increasing shift from VNFs to CNFs, uh, cloud native functions. Uh, more microservices oriented and more modular uh, and more cloud-like. So uh, that's a key importance uh, consideration uh, for that. And orchestration is also key as well. Uh, because as uh, workloads uh, need to have more flexibility back and forth between the edge, enterprise edge, uh, network edge, and the public cloud, uh, you need to be able to have uh, the same platform from an orchestration point of view as well. And you need to be able to have the flexibility to run any workload at any edge or in the cloud, right? So uh, from that point of view, uh, that's, that layer is very key and openness uh, provides valuable uh, benefit for that layer as well. So analytics intelligence, uh, when you, for a tick edge environment especially, when you have multiple functions, uh, either from the networking or from IT, OT or uh, downstream IoT environments, uh, then 
that UCP platform becomes kind of uh, the central, uh, one of the central compute platforms, right? And from that point of view, service assurance uh, becomes uh, really key. And uh, because, you know, from a service provider point of view, you need to be able to provide uh, the service assurance. And to provide a high level of service assurance, you need to have uh, fine grained telemetry uh, and data uh, out of that platform. And uh, based on that telemetry data, you need to be able to uh, make some intelligent decisions uh, in terms of the workloads running on that edge uh, and manage accordingly. And on top of that, uh, another important consideration is convergence of workloads. So uh, as we touched, we are seeing that convergence happening more and more. Uh, for example, for a retailer environment, right, which also uh, runs uh, an IoT system based on video surveillance, for example, we are seeing retailers demanding both SD-WAN functionality and that video surveillance functionality uh, to be able to run on the same platform instead of having some uh, different siloed uh, systems. So from that point of view, convergence of workloads uh, becomes key. And for IoT workloads, uh, especially for uh, deep video analytics and inference, Intel has, uh, again, an open source toolkit called OpenVINO. And we are seeing many uh, third-party ISVs uh, adapting that uh, OpenVINO toolkit. And for downstream IoT, right, it becomes key to be able to securely uh, and remotely provision uh, downstream IoT devices. Intel Secure Device Onboarding uh, is a key technology to enable that. So Intel SDO running on a UCP platform uh, becomes uh, as a provisioning gateway for the downstream IoT devices. And also Intel SDO uh, can be used to provision the UCP and the layers on top of that itself uh, so that everything can be done remotely, securely, and with minimal touch or zero touch uh, because uh, I think these are key as well. Goka, thank you very much. Comprehensive overview of, of Intel's um, offerings there for the Enterprise Edge. Um, and David and David, thank you both very much indeed. And don't forget, you can watch the additional interviews and discussions on the Intelligent Enterprise Edge as part of the Intel Network and Edge vSummit series. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.